Uh, so if your neighbor is not smiling well, please look for somebody that looks like what you know you have and give that neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, you look wonderful. Oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful. Glory, glory, glory. All right, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Welcome to International Youth Ministries Fellowship. Yes, you can do better. And this is what we're going to know if we have youths in the house. Uh, mega youth! Uh, only some people, only those that know, knows. Mega youth! In case you don't know what they are saying, let me tell you so you can heckle away. Eh? It is called heroes on the front line. Eh? You are an hero and you are at the front line. Mega youth! Come on, if you know you're an hero, can you celebrate yourself one more time as you take your seat this wonderful evening? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. We are honored to have you. And we are sure and can let you know with all confidence and assurance that today is my day. I don't know about you, but today is my day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today, my destiny supporter will locate me. Hallelujah. All right, please quickly, I just want to pay keen attention to the next information you'll be getting because one of the things we've come to know is that um, now Papa is coming and everywhere is full. Yes, I know a lot of people are still going to come in and Papa is coming now. The downfall everywhere is full now. Uh, when it's normal youth meeting now, only this two row. For the sake of those who, does, who, are, who are not aware that we normally hold our youth fellowship, this announcement is for you. Please know that our youth meeting holds every Monday. Tell your neighbor every Monday. And the time is 4 p.m. on the dot. Let me tell you something. You don't want to miss our youth meeting. It's, 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 it's a brand. It's not the usual. There are so many, so many things you're going to learn from our youth meeting. Now, use the opportunity to evangelize to your next neighbor. Say, neighbor, I want to see you on Monday. On Monday, say neighbor, I want to see you at the youth meeting on Monday. You that is evangelizing, make sure you come. If you don't come, you have broken the law and it's a sin. All right. And also, I'll let you to single sisters. You guys meet every second Saturday of the month. And also, our single brothers meeting holds every second Wednesday of the month. Every second Wednesday of the month. Please, single brothers, take this to heart. Alright, I would like you to know also that um, in the youth fellowship, we don't just walk by miracle. <laughs> uh, you can't just fit it and not work it. There is a system in which we operate. You understand? We do not have business that we're running. This fellowship runs by the special grace of God and by me and you. I'm Hallelujah. What I mean by this is we pay our youth levy every month and it is very small i'm trying to i'm putting it to the house of rep boarding the youth meeting to increase the money because 100 naira every month is very small so but still for now it's still 100 naira every month in a month it's in a year it's 1200 naira so please make sure you key to this make sure you pay your youth levy and god's going to bless you richly good in the name of jesus celebrate now, our youth conference is coming up very, very soon. July of this month is our international youth conference. I thought somebody's going to clap. Yes. And to this end, every youth is to, we don't, we don't just, we don't pay levy. We tie and we, we buy into a movement. So, every youth is to align themselves into this movement with whatever they know they can. But the least we do, you can align yourself into the movement is what we call 1,000, 3,500 naira. You can call it your levy, you can call it your due for the conference, but every youth is to pay the sum of 3,500 naira. That's the minimum price you can pay to connect. The Victory Campaign comes to North America. I am coming to Calgary. Strangers shall hear my voice and obey. Calgary, Canada. Get ready for undeniable moment of visitation. Let it come. Please. Power. Power. 
evidential testimonies all over. It's going to be a good time to just enjoy the grace of God. The sick will be healed, bodies will be touched, lives will be turned around. Hey, but this brother was mad for 16 years. Mad. Mad for 16 years. 16 years. And the mother, she moved aside. And I asked the bro, I said, what is your name? He answered. He responded. 16 years. 16 mad. years madness disappeared. Victory 2023, Calgary, Canada, Apostle Jensen Suleiman. I'll see you in Canada. I'm coming for Victory 2023. I saw an altar in Takradi, and I saw written on that altar, Damso. That's and, my surname. And I hear the Holy Spirit begins to tell me, I'm seeing photographs of family members buried in the pot. The Lord said, break the pot. 28th February and 1st March 2023 happening at Magnolia Hall 5075 Falcon Ridge BLV Northeast Unit 900 Calgary ABT 3J 3K9 Canada the time is 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. for inquiries please call UK is settled Four months. Yes, sir. You are four months pregnant. Yes, sir. Muscat Homan. I saw you in the realm of the spirit. Something happened around May. Sir. I'm talking of your marriage. Yes, sir. And somebody saw you, looked at you, and she told you that this marriage will not have peace. Yes, yes. In fact, she told you that she will take your husband from you. Yes. This is dominion work Different from what we've ever seen. I will be in Muscat. Oman. Victory 2023 comes to the nation of Oman. Victory 2023. Apostle Johnson Suleiman. I'll be praying for the sick and believing God for testimonies. She was blind. Yes, she was blind for one year. One of them fell down. Why are you falling? Papa, they tested all of them. She was confirmed blind. I'll be prophesying over your life. I'll be sharing the word of God. There's going to be a revival in your spiritual life. There's going to be healing to your bodies. And above all, there's going to be a word from God. By the word of the Lord, after now, you become a wonder. 6th and 7th March 2023, happening at Ala Baraka Hall, behind Army Camp, Mount Bella Government of Muscat. Oh man, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. daily. For inquiries, please call. You shall overcome. There is no army, no fortress, no giant can stand against our God. God is about to give to you a notable miracle. God is about to give to you an evidence that can be argued. Experience life changing moment. I saw your uncle holding a sword and is pursuing you. It's true. I'm seeing this person hunted for your father killed him. Your mother was just killed. Mortuary now. Mortuary. Yes, daddy. If to kill is good, let the killer experience it. Be preserved. Okay. There is a miracle here. Tell me. For 18 years, this woman could not walk except with the egg. 9th and 10th, March 2023, by 4 p.m. daily. Venue, Word of Life Bible Church, Wawi Delta State, Nigeria. Host, Papa Ida Orisha, B. Herbey. Like a mighty rush of wind, so it's going to be. Your victory is now. He was brought to half dead. Half dead. I could not walk. Okay. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. After you pray this morning, look at her. She's walking now to the glory of God. Victory 2023, Barry France, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Hey! The victory train and victory campaign. Do you live in Italy? Do you live in Finland? Do you live any part of Europe? Be my guest in Paris. Two days, four meeting, one venue, one preacher. Your life will never remain the same again. There is a word from God for you. Come and hear it. I'll see you in France. Date, 13th and 14th March 2023. Time, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. daily. Venue, Sally Melody, 5 Avenue, De La Resistance, 93240 Stains. For inquiries, please call. You will experience divine touch. We are not excited to be here this evening. Can you get the Lord your days? To the right. 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 Ori ore ori mi o. Ori ore. I carry favor for head o. I carry favor for head o. Can you demonstrate? I carry favor for head o. 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 I tell 
Atewa mi mo fi ya bo ti o ba bo hure. Atewa mi o fi. Yes. Atewa. Atewa mi mo fi ya bo ti o ba mo hure. Atewa ni o fi ya mo ti o ba mo hure. Oh. Shut. You're not a man, 
Um, major teachings that people have not the church has not taught on marriage is people having an understanding of what courtship is all about you see when church has a mentality we can te- teach you now to get the li- li- right partner as a life partner, in case you see somebody, in case you meet somebody. But the funny thing is, the people that you are teaching in case you meet somebody are already with somebody. So we are just deceiving ourselves, say, if you meet somebody. So when you are teaching in their brain, they are checking the person that they are with. They are not actually looking for somebody they will meet. Do you understand? So people do not teach. They teach you on prayer and the rest. They don't teach you what to do when you are with the person. So, If you meet or you are with somebody, as we are believing God to get married, what are the things that we have to be doing? People don't know what to do. And that's one of the reasons if you discover in companies today, the companies that that spend time to attract make more money than companies that spend time to keep. For example, cosmetics, those that do their face and the rest. It's, it's expensive. Do you know that? If the young ladies around tell you how much they pay to make up one, one makeup, is it expensive? And sometimes imagine when they have events, like four events in a week. It's a lot of money. Okay. Do you know now that people even do surgery on their body? Yeah. All of this is to what? Attract. But you cannot keep. So that's where the problem is. You've got to also learn how to keep because attracting is not a problem, but how to keep. Even men, boys, they go to the gym and do all of that because they want to look good. They want to build themselves to attract. Some of them ju- just enjoy to gym. But there are some others who deliberately want to have confidence. So when somebody sees them, the person is like, man. But the truth is that six pack does not pay house rent. That's the truth. You go to the market, for example, you want to buy something and the woman is saying pepper and tomatoes and you stand before her. You do. Mm. She'll be looking at you like this. My picking, if you don't move, move finish, tell me what you want. Nobody wants to attract, but nobody wants to do the things that helps them to keep. So at the end of the day, people have a problem. So I want to share on something I would do probably four times this year, but I'm starting now. Friendship, courtship, and marriage. Friendship, courtship, and marriage. Friendship, courtship, and what? And marriage. Friendship, courtship, and marriage. But let me first of all thank many of you who are single if you are not married. Congratulations. 
singlehood is a gift to be enjoyed. If you do not have a partner now, you don't have marriage, you are not married now. You don't know what you are enjoying until you marry. I'm saying, love, I want to marry, I want to marry. You know, now you are single, you can wake up anytime. You can wake up, you can lie on the bed and wake up one in the afternoon, no problem. How many of you know as a young lady, as a young man, you can choose not to cook a whole day? You, don't, you are not owing anybody. You, you say, I just want to go out and eat. You know, I was watching one documentary and they asked a white young lady, they said, what's the first sh shock and surprise you had when you got married? He said, I was shocked that I have to cook every day. He said, I was even shocked that sometimes I have to cook two times a day. When I was looking at her, I felt like slapping her. All those children you see that jump in job, you think it's, it's a battery. They are charging them. <laughs> you think it's a Duracell. You know Duracell. You just plug, put Duracell, just ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. The child just it's food. <laughs> they eat. And sometimes you can give a child rice in the morning. If you come in the afternoon, mommy, I don't want rice. Give me pound the yam. You, you go and pound. Uh, this thing you want to enter, I'm, I'm showing you already. This marriage you want to enter. If you now have a husband also, that's a problem. Sometimes I'll be in the house, I don't want to talk, I just want to rest. And I want to rest, maybe read and pray. My son will come to the room. Daddy, what are you doing? I say, I'm resting. I want to rest for some time. It's okay, I won't disturb you. After 30 minutes, are you still resting? I say, oh God, I wish I was single. <laughs> so, if, so there are some things that if you don't develop them, those are the little things that start bringing problems, quarrels, issues, that if you do not have a proper understanding, you begin to fall into problems. You see, marriage, people must understand what single is. Just the same way as a young lady, as a young man, there is, there is the kind of person you have in mind to marry. The truth is that kind of person also has the kind of person he wants to marry. So you must be the kind of person by nature. You must understand the difference. A man's brain... You see, when you begin to, under, begin to understand how to live life, you sit back, you understand what a man is made of, and you understand what a woman is made of, before you ever think of a relationship. A man's brain is one way. A man thinks one way. A woman uses the whole part of her brain. Men use one part. There's the other part they don't touch till they die. Yes. Okay, let me give you an instance. You are living in a house. Eh? In a house like this. You have a landlord. Right? God forbid, landlord dies. The woman hears the news. A young lady hears the news. Oh, oh, we take care of the wife. The children. He was a nice man. He was a good man. Oh, that little baby. That's the way a woman receives the news. A man receives the news. Landlord don't die. He and then you're here picking the collect rent now. <laughs> uh, guys, am I correct? Okay. Now that you're picking the I know I need to park on me. I'll call the I will be called that small boy. Landlord, God forbid. I will park. You see the way man reasons? And the woman says, Ah, you are heartless. You are thinking of rent. You are thinking of rent. What about the wife? Men are not wired to think like that. This is what happens. And this is why there are problems in relationship because most people enter a relationship without knowing how a man thinks. So they expect the person to think like them. That is why it's called misunderstanding. You have a different understanding. He has a different understanding. When both understanding now clash, it becomes misunderstanding. So, when you begin to sit back, that's why you see people who do not have a crisis in marriage is because, not because they are supermen, there are certain things they choose to have at the back of their mind. Many people enter marriage, so much expectation. Have you not seen people who say, let me just marry and have peace. I want to rest. So when they get married, crisis continue. Because if you are not happy before marriage, you can't be happy in marriage. You've got to be happy. In fact, a person who wants to marry has too much happiness that he or she is looking for who to share it with. But many have so, so much sadness, <laughs> so much depression, and they are looking for who to contaminate and pollute with that depression. And overflow. So the expectation is so high. The impute is so minimal. Okay, I grew up, my father, my biological father loved Suya. You know Suya? When he was in his 50s, we are growing up in his 40s. He loved suya. So we grew up 
if you, hang, if you hang around him, when he's eating, he'll give you one and all. So I grew up liking suya. I liked suya so much. And when I went abroad the first time, that's what they call steak. It's the meat they put on wood. So that is American version of suya. But you know what suya? You put pepper, you season. So when I went abroad, I had that mentality. The first thing I did, when someone wanted to ask, I want steaks. They said, that's where they sell it. So I went there, I bought it, I put it in my mouth. I had too much expectation. I said, in fact, I felt like they were initiating me into it. <laughs> because there was blood. They all said, there's still blood. So I did my mind like, <laughs> one of my friends said, why you do face like that? I said, I don't drink blood. I don't drink blood. I don't drink blood. Jesus, I don't drink blood. Jesus, Jesus, I don't drink blood. Much expectation. But I didn't have a knowledge of what was there. And I saw people like me eating blood and eating flesh. Because they already have an idea of what it is. So whatever they got, they didn't bother them. That's how life is. That's how life is. That's how you, there's expect. When you know what to expect, when you have an understanding of a thing, you know what to expect. When I was in Lagos, I don't like eating from, you know this five star hotel? Real food. If you want real food, any place in Lagos or anywhere that is clean, your food is not sweet. <laughs> Better food, you must jump gutter. Gutter. <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> and you must have like three people who are very dirty who are washing plates. They must have one woman. She, she doesn't stand up. She's very fat. <laughs> she, she never stand up. <laughs> she will sit down. She doesn't stand up. She will sit down. That, she's the one commanding everybody. You don't wash plates. And when you come, you must wash your own plate. Oh. Then you're nasty on the queue. If you eat that food. <laughs> you have so much expectation. You have an idea of where to get it. One of my friends visited me in Lagos. He, he was, we were friends in school. So he came to Lagos to visit me. He said, I'm hungry. I said, dress up. Let's go somewhere. He said, ah, call somebody. I said, no. This one, they don't bring it here. You go there. <laughs> Went there. He's up on the queue. He said, why are they on the queue? I said, you also know. He said, oh. Went there. I took plate. I washed. He said, ah, why are you going to wash plate? I said, no, no, no wash. Stand there. They look. <laughs> Stay there. Don't wash. So he took the plate and he washed it. After washing he went, I see where you're going. He said, I want to sit down now. I said, Q, stand for my back here. Ah, for food? After a while, he was frowning. They gave him the food. And if you say it's not, but I said, yeah, this one too small. The, the is in alone. Ah, this one small. Have come out, Benny, come out for When he ate it, in the morning, he was dressed as where they go. He said, that place. <laughs> he said, that place, that place, that place. I said, why? He said, ah, the food is sweet, oh. When you have an idea, everything you need in life is available if you know how to get it. Everything in life that you need is available. Just know how to get it. Amen. I said amen. amen. <laughs> like I said, before I go further, I'm trying to give you a background. No lady, it doesn't matter what it is. Oh, society has given us so much liberation, mentally, liberation of, of attitude. And the lady can send a message to a young boy and say, I like you. That's crazy. Don't do it. You are making yourself a commodity. No matter how you like somebody, don't let the person know about it. If you are a lady. Is it normal to like somebody? It's very normal. It doesn't make you less spiritual. You know, there are so many things we think that if we do, we are, not, we are no more Christians. You see somebody that you just... You are, no, it is lost that is a problem. When you see somebody and the first thing that's coming to your mind is how to get immoral with the person, that's a problem. You can like somebody. It's not, it doesn't make you less a believer. But as a lady, you never, you see, develop yourself to attract several people and from the several people, you make choice on who to settle with. When you make yourself so cheap, even idiots will prize you. How many of you have ever had something to do with Lagos? Live in Lagos, gone to Lagos, Okay. How many of you know what they call hawking? People that sell things on the express. How many of you know once a thing is sold on the express, 
Any idiot can price it. You carry something like this. How much is this thing? It's 10,000. Uh-uh. You know, take it 100. There are no laws on how to price on the express. There are no what? No laws. Why? Because you carried your goods to them. You made it public. You made it easily accessible. But go to a shop that has a price tag. You can't price. That shop that, that shop that has a price tag speaks of how you have developed yourself. You attract who deserves you. When you develop yourself, you attract who de- deserves you. But you cheapen yourself, you attract any kind of idiot. And there are a lot of people who don't know that. So some people, you see them, they look very good, very uh, handsome, very whatever. But there's nothing. There are some ladies, you see them, they look so classy. But when they open their mouth, you say, hey. Write this down. To whom shape is given, sense is expected. To whom shape is given, sense is expected. There are some people. Ah, let me not talk. Let me go, just go into. There are steps. Can I go on? You know, before I became a pastor, one of the areas, before I started church, one of the areas I was very, 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 very into was relationships and evangelism, having crusades and teaching the relationships. And I found out a lot of things. I knew I was going to have a successful marriage. I knew. I just knew. Because I knew a lot. And that's what happens. You got to know. You see, before I tell you what I'm going to tell you about courtship, there are three or four things, areas of your life you have to develop yourself before you meet a partner. There are three or four areas. You must develop yourself before you meet a partner. If you read Genesis chapter 24, if you start reading from verse 12, 13, 14 down, and you read Proverbs chapter 31, you read from verse 30, you start saying how to develop. The first development a person needs is spiritual. Until you have a relationship with God, don't think of a relationship with anybody. Proverbs 31, 30, favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. You must be spiritually developed. You must have an intimacy with God. And it's the intimacy with God that helps you to set boundaries for yourself. So do not think of a relationship with a man or anybody until you already have one with God. If you do not have a relationship with God, in fact, there are some, some of you who should not be in the relationship now. If somebody is asking you out for a relationship, no, for now. Because you, there are certain things in your life you are still battling with. So if you now enter a relationship with that person, even if that person is a firebrand, you will pull him down because your own weakness, you have not del- been delivered from it. I don't know if you have fun, I'm saying. So the person, give me time. Something happened one day. A, a man called Gandhi. Maitama Gandhi. He was an, um, the Indian ruler or leader. A woman has a son. And that son, Gandhi was his favorite, his model. Great model. So the son decided to always talk about Gandhi to the mom. But the son had a weakness. The problem was the guy liked sugar. He was sweet tooth. He can put six cubes, seven cubes. The mother had talked and talked. The boy wouldn't change. So one time, they had the privilege of meeting with Gandhi. So the mother brought it up. Say, my son loves you so much, but he's always eating sugar. Please talk to him to stop. Gandhi looked at the boy. He told the mother, bring this boy in two weeks' time. The mother said, you can't talk to him. I said, in two weeks' time. The boy came in two weeks' time and Gandhi looked him in the eyes. I said, boy, stop taking sugar. The mother said, why didn't you do this two weeks ago? Gandhi said, I said, two weeks ago, I eat too much sugar. I was living, I was in America. I was in one state in America, moving to another state. And I saw some people who were dressed, men behaving like girls. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know those kind of people. I don't want to. I'm on, I'm on television. That those kind of people. You know what they call them. What they do. Men. I was just looking at them like this. So when they playing together, and I was just looking at them. So they were talking about one particular guy who was running for senate, and they were saying, "Oh my God, 
I don't even like him. I was looking at unfortunately for me, I was sitting. <laughs> it wasn't my plane. There's nothing I could do. So I was looking at them and I asked the question. I said, Why don't you like him? He said, Because he's like us. I said, Why don't you like somebody like you? He said, No. Oh. If he does what we do, he cannot control us. You see, sense? Since he does what we do, so what's the difference? We need somebody who, who doesn't do, who has mastered the act. So you must be spiritual so that you stop hurting people. There are people that, there are some young ladies that kept themselves, kept their bodies until they met a Christian brother, a so-called Christian brother. Are you following me? And that's why personally, I don't believe in dating. I believe in courtship. This is the called dating. It has to be friendship to courtship. Dating is random. Courtship is intentional. When you have been somebody say, oh, I want to date, let's just see how it goes. Don't let any young man enter your life and tell you, let's see how it goes. It has to go somewhere. It must be going somewhere. Say, make you the look up. Make you the look up. Stay in your papa house. Make you the look up for that side. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, say, let's just. And at the end of the day, when, listen, when we talk like this, eh? Many of you here who are hiding your relationship from me and from authority, you think you are doing us. In fact, you are even helping us because it makes our life easier. When they say, tell us who you're with, you decide to hide it. Many people are liars. Liars. One of our pastors left a sister. If I noticed the pastor was no more committed to church things, blah, 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 I was wondering what's going on. He met his sister. I didn't know what was going on. The sister succeeded in taking his money, taking all of everything. He didn't bring the girl to me. Do you know what the girl told him? I'll shock you. The guy said, myself, mentioned two or three other pastors that were looking for how to have a relationship with her. The very time he said, I want Papa to know you. She, he doesn't worship in the airport. I worship one of the state branches. He said, I want the, my pastor in that place to know you. I want to know you. And I told the boys, are you stupid? He said, that was what? So, she said that to make him not bring her to us, knowing that I already know who she was dating in America. I'm not sure you understand the game. So, he started showing her, ah, Papa, I want to see when I come to our church. I said, sure, see me, you're my daughter, anytime. He said, you see, Papa was saying that you come and see, see him. The pastor said, how are you doing? I do see you in church. Daddy, I miss you, I miss you too. He said, see, I'm didn't I tell you? So all of those evidences she built together made her empty the brother. He sold this car, sold his computer, sold this laptop. Where he sold his phone, sold everything. So he couldn't bring her to me. I don't know if you have what I'm saying. Con walked on the brain of the guy. In fact, the guy even became his fire died. Until the day he found out, he came knelt as daddy forgive me. I said, forgive for what? He started opening up to me. Myself and his pastor were together. We started laughing. He said, that girl, said, yes, Maradona. Neither gave me. I said, we know her. She's like this, Maradona. Because you know when he brings her to us, we say, guy, don't you go there. Because we know what this person is doing. The young man knows that when, he bring, when they bring you, we say, brother, let me give you a story. One guy. <laughs> okay, the way you're laughing, I'm not talking again. <laughs> I have, I have, you know, I have some daughters here eh, who, let me tell you the way we see life. There are some daughters who are, they don't have biological fathers. Are you following me? So once you are their pastor, you are like their biological father. They want to tell you everything. So there was a daughter I have like that. Every single thing she would tell me. Everything. So one time, she, she would just jump, say, daddy, daddy, I want to tell you something. I said, what? See, there's this person that is asking me out. I said, okay. You know, boundaries. Set boundaries. Okay. He said, I want you to meet, to meet him. I said, are you all right? Me meet him or he meet me? He said, okay, we'll meet you. I said, okay, where is he coming? He says, in church here. Yeah. I said, this church? I said, ah, I said, it's easier. What department? He said, protocol. I said, ah, my protocol. <laughs> he said, yes. I said, ah, okay, that's nice. I started calculating. Who did protocol will never engage? <laughs> <laughs> Who is in protocol that doesn't have somebody? Because one, that's one, there are criteria to come around me. There are criteria. You know, who is in protocol? So as we're entering church, I said, come, come, come. 
Where is the person? See, daddy, I've told him to come and see you. I don't know. We'll be postponing, postponing, postponing. <laughs> Red flag. As I heard that, my head made ta-da. I said, okay. Finally, the guy, and I said, okay, you know what? When I'm entering the church, I'm leaving the office. Just, if you see the person, just signal to me. Don't talk. Just signal. She said, how? I said, just signal, just papa. Okay. So, when I got there, she just signaled somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing. I started laughing. I said, okay, no problem. When I said, come upstairs, I told the guy, I said, please come up. When the guy noticed she was up, he couldn't enter. He was waiting. After all, I said, they should bring him. When he came up, I said, sorry, oh, I'm so happy oh, that my daughter and yourself are not in the relationship. He said, me, when, where, how? The girl said, you but you told me now that you love me it's a love of God love of God love of God can't I love you the love of God and I said he said it's not love of God it's not love of God you told me you love me he said papa you see one time did, 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 I gave him this I supported him because she, she is a very good person that's where I'm going to she was somebody who could work with her hands because that's one of the characteristics of the virtuous woman I gave him this, I gave him that. Even one time. I, did, I, did. I now said, calm down. I said, brother, why? He said, daddy, oh. this was his word. He said, daddy, look at this small leader I'm trying to help. That was his word. And that got me very angry. I don't like when you commonize people. I said, oh, really? He said, yes. I said, sister, show you have heard now. He said, daddy, he's lying. I said, no, he's not lying. This is the real him. And when people tell you who they are, believe them. When people tell you who they are, I'm trying to tell you some of the reasons why they can't let you come to us. They can't because they know we'll, we'll say the truth. We'll tell you to be careful. Spiritual. If you don't, you see, when they say the fear of God, the fear of God, the fear of God means you consider God before you act. It doesn't, doesn't make God carry koboko and will carry gun. Eh? So because you don't want that gun and horse whip. Okay, look up. Let me say something. How I many of you know there is no sin that you commit now that God has not seen before? Eh? Do you think there's anything you do now and God will say, You die today. There's nothing you have you will do that God has not seen before. When God tells you to stay away from sin, it's not because of Him. It's because no sin will destroy you. It's not Him. It's God already. He's already God. He's the great God. So when you don't have that spiritual maturity, when you have not grown and developed yourself spiritually, when you try to get into a relationship, you keep causing problems. That's when brother will come to you. When are you spending the night in my house? Spend the night in my house. And I keep asking, is the night money that you spend? Spend the night, spend the night. No, all of those things, you don't need them. Are you following what I'm talking about? First of all, you must fall in love with God before you fall in love with a partner. Say to your neighbor, fall in love with God before you fall in love with a partner. Someone doesn't, who doesn't have a relationship with God. I, I'm saying this because one of the biggest problems we have around the nations of the world is that there are, you see, marriage, the, the breakdown of society, how I many of you know the breakdown of society is on the platform of a breakdown of family? You may come from a broken home, but don't create one. Can I repeat that? You may come from a broken home, but don't create one. Deliberately choose to say, I will not create a broken home. And it takes your spirituality and your relationship with God. When a relationship with a person is affecting your relationship with God, break it. When you... you, you this is not you. You were not thinking like this before. Now all your brain is now doing... You start wearing the things that naturally you don't like to wear because that's what the person likes you to wear. You start saying the things that the person wants you to say. 
Once you're, you just notice that you, you don't pray anymore, you can't flow anymore, you can't do certain things. You say, I think we have to call up. You have to, you have to rest. Let's rest. Let this thing wait. Let this thing what? Wait. Let it wait. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> if that person fears the Lord, there are some things he will not do or she will not do to you. That's why they, there must be a third party in the relationship, which is God. You both must act, be accountable to God. So, that's the first thing you must ever do. Straighten your relationship with God. Out of the, the, the huge overflow of your relationship with God, you are not looking for a brother to study with, a sister to study with, a person to discuss with. Very, very important. Tell some of the spiritual development, spiritual maturity. Say that again. In Proverbs 31, verse 27 to 28, Proverbs 31, it says, You look at to the ways of a household, eat at not the bread of idleness. Verse 28, our children arise and call her blessed, her husband also. And he praised her. Her children, her husband, not idle. So you can see domestic and homely development. Homely and domestic maturity. As a lady, don't ever think of marriage if you cannot cook. You know, we live in the world of, eh, eh, I don't, me, me, I'm going to hire a cook. If you can't cook, don't even think of marriage. A woman is not wired to be a cook. So don't think I'm, I, I, no. A woman is not wired that a woman must be a cook. There are times when you won't have access to a chef, no matter how rich you are. You go to a nation where you don't know anybody. You won't have access to anything. At that point, you have to eat. And it becomes a place where the man doesn't have the, 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 the things that are available on the menu. The man doesn't eat them. There must be domestic maturity. There are people, young, young ladies, young men, 4 p.m., they've not had their bath. 2, 2, 2 p.m. they've not brushed their mouth. Some people think that they, 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 they win argument because they are sharp. There are times you win argument because when you open your mouth, they say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. There are some arguments some people win. See, see, eh? see, eh? see mm. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Mona Begam, Mona Begam, Mona Begam. Because 2 p.m., once you just open your mouth, Uzziah. When Uzziah comes out of your mouth, they say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You win, you win. No, no, no. I want to pour my mind. Say, mm -mm. It, na, na, he offend you. Na, he offend you. Please beg him. So, not everybody, not everybody wins argument because they have brain. Some, it is what comes out of domestic you must be domesticated. Some people think that men don't sweep, men don't clean. So some boys don't do anything because they think that when they get married, the, 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 the woman is going to do everything. You've got to learn how to do some things. You must learn how to do some things. Are you listening? You must learn how to wash as a man. Learn how to iron. Why are you laughing? Learn it. There are times in a hurry, you have to iron your children's clothes. Learn it. What makes you feel that it's only a woman? Woman must no, no. Me, me. When I go around the world and I'm with mama, I iron her clothes. I do me personally. T today. I will iron the clothes. I will hang them. I will iron them well. She will bring them out. I will iron them well and I will stretch them, keep them for her. Let me ask you a question. Does it reduce the anointing? Homely. Homely. And that's what some people don't know. Say, so, so a man of God. Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm, a man, I'm a man of God. Please respect men of God, but fear man of God. <laughs> no, respect men of God, but fear man of God. Say, I'm a man of God. Say, hey! 
<laughs> you must learn it. In fact, there are some guys who taught their wives how to cook. So what makes you feel that you, you don't have to know all these things? You don't have to. No, learn it. Domestic growth or maturity is not only feminine dependent. Even the man. Domestic maturity is not feminine dependent. As a man, there are things you have to learn. About the house. Amen. 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 It's very, very important. Verse 19 of Genesis 24. I've, I've not even... Hey. Uh, can I go on? Yeah. Huh? Verse 19 of Genesis 24. When she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. The man didn't tell her this. She said it by herself. All the man wanted was give me water and draw for my camels. He never opened his mouth. All the man said, give me water and give. Let me have drink. But in his mind, he wanted for his camels. She used her initiative. Mental maturity. Mental development. Mental. You see why it's good. Very good. As a lady, to read. To attend this kind of seminars. To develop yourself. Because the more you read and study, the more your mind is exposed. When you marry a man, there are discussions he will bring to you. It takes a, an enlightened mind to bring contribution. One of the things I love about my wife is that my wife is deep. My wife is deep. There are some things I will bring, the response she will give me, I will look at her like this. Deep. There are some people that are very shallow, some women. How did this happen? Hmm, now nah, wow. That's your only contribution. Not in the brain. Kunu, kunu, kunu. Not in the brain. I happened to be in a city that was very nasty. Very nasty city. Behave anyhow and the rest. <laughs> and um, you know there are some women and some ladies who think that their life is all about they are to catch work. And they are to shake their bum. They don't shake their brain. No. I said something very nasty in that city. It was a group of young ladies. And I said, twerk your brain, not your body. Brain, brain. They're checking body. No brain. Exposed minds do not appreciate and pursue external features. There's a content. Can I say this to you? The content has more value than the container. Yes. You want to break. Uh, but when you start, you must be mentally developed and see what you don't Beauty, being beautiful, being handsome is a gift from God. But being knowledgeable is a deliberate assignment you engage in. You must deliberately begin to read and study. Study and read. You, have you know, see, today, how many of you, anytime I minister, you learn something new? Do you know why? If this was not just Holy Spirit, it's because I always study. I always study. It's your intake that determines what you bring out. When people, you stop us, said, bring my books. He said, give diligence to give attention to reading. When Jesus got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he went to the temple, Luke chapter 4, he opened the book to read. Develop your mind. This kind of service is held. You look forward to it. You are engaging your mind. You understand things. You engage your mind. That's what education does. Not meeting somebody say, oh, oh, I saw the person, I fell in love. I fell in love. You, you will wound. Keep falling, you will wound one day. 
You don't fall in love. You don't. You don't fall in love. You grow into love. Any love you fall into at first sight is going to hurt you. There are things that grow. I'm, okay, wait. I'm one of your students. Did you fall into school? <laughs> eh? Did you fall into <laughs> You did fall into school. They went rudiments. How many of you have money in the bank? No matter how small. Did you fall into the bank? <laughs> what happened? You got engaged in, the, in banking. You got a form. You filled. You put your passport photograph. They asked for this requirement. And after that, they gave you. What is it? So that's what real love. You grow into it. Over time. Over time. You see yourself. Once you see somebody and there's this strong attraction. is lost. And it will crash. He said, man, he said, prayer. <laughs> ah, brother, calm down now. <laughs> it's like somebody's, it's like somebody's, is, is eyeing what is his own. <laughs> Amen. You know, people think that, you know, people think that marriage makes you happy. Yeah, if I just get married now, I'll be happy. Marriage makes you better. Marriage doesn't make you happy. It makes you a better person. Marriage doesn't make people happy. It is when you are happy before marriage, you'll be happy in marriage. If you bring sadness into marriage, that's what you get. But marriage makes you better, better. You develop yourself. Two are better than one. Not two are happier than one. It's not good for man to be alone. The almighty God said so. I will make him an helpmate for him. Help. Put him by the side. Put her by the side of the man. If you ask most women today, if they want to be single again, they'll tell you yes. Not because they don't like the man, but because of the pressure. Before I got married, I, I, I read a lot of books. I still read, I still read Bible books and read. So when I'm on the bed, you know, sometimes you just read, you put the book on the side. When you wake up in the night, you pray, you read. So I have many books. Books on the side. Many. Bible. And I like reading different translations. No, not now. Now you can have a Bible that have several translations. But then you have to have every every Bible with a translation. But life has evolved. Now you can have one Bible. It has message. It has NIV. It has um, good news. It has all that. But then if it's good news, it's good news. Very straight. If it's <laughs> message, is message. So I'll have all those Bibles on the bed. When I got married, I, my first worry was that way too. So my wife is going to be sleeping on the same bed. Where will I put my book? <laughs> Do you understand what I was going? So by the time she came, she looks here. She will push everything. You arrange them and just drop them. And there's, you know, there's a way you arrange your thing. You understand? There's a way you, are, you you read this one to page 78. You put something at the middle. You read this, <laughs> you read this one to page 40. You put something. You read it on to page 22. You burn it. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Somebody just came now. Remove the biro. Remove everything. Just pack. So by the time you enter the house, you're like... <laughs> He said, well, well, he said, the place was just, no, you for call me. <laughs> so, over time, you have to start a job. You see, you don't understand what life is. <clears throat> I, said, I want to marry, I want to marry, I want to marry. If I don't tire, eh, let, let, let someone just come to this house and just marry me. <laughs> <laughs> mental maturity Jesus the Bible says in Philippians 2 5 let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus what made Jesus Jesus was the kind of mind he had mind mind <laughs> if you are a lady here you are blessed you know anytime I bless you like that I'm about to hit you <laughs> let me tell you why I say you are blessed can I get the message translation of Proverbs eleven twenty two. 
Proverbs 11.22. Message translation. Proverbs 11.22. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful face on an empty head. God be with you. <laughs> he said like a golden ring, a, a face that has no brain. It's like putting a gold ring on a pig's nose. So you see a, <laughs> a pretty, you didn't know that was in the Bible, right? <laughs> so don't just make up your face, make up your brain. Don't just make up your face, make up your brain. Don't just wear bone straight. Have a straight brain. Have brain straight. As a young man, don't just put on the best of clothes. There are certain women who are confident. They are proud when their husbands start talking. When they are, the man is, mm, mm, because there is sense. You see as you There's a confidence you command or you are intelligent. When we are students, I don't know if you know in class, people are drawn to the intelligence. The money I made. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Free food. Sometimes, I'm, I'm honest to you, sometimes a whole month, I don't know what is, I don't know anything about cooler, cooler. Guys like me, we bring food. To bring this one, we'll be eating. They say, ah, I want to put me through on this. I said, I would have put you through, but mm, I'll be spending time to cook. I'll bring food. I said, okay. <laughs> so, you've got to engage. Anything you see, you read. Develop. Have this voracious. Uh, don't only read Bible. You hear me? You've not studied Romans 10 17. Faith cometh by your, and hearing. By the word, anything that the word of God agrees and permits, it is a faith coming by hearing and hearing the word. So it's not only the Bible you should read, read materials that God approves, materials that are healthy to your spirit, books. Especially now, we have ebooks. You don't have to get hard copy. If you have hard copy, fine. But there are ebooks, you go to your phone, you download you. Those are things you should be reading, not gossip sites. Not gossip sites, things that will develop your brain. Things that will develop your mind. One time I was invited by banks. About 14 banks came together to do a seminar. And they wanted me to speak, speak on fidelity and investment. And under the letter they said, please speak on these things without using the Bible. And once I use the Bible, it's the work of God. It's free. So since I'm not using the Bible, I give them a bill. And they paid me half of it. And so when you are done, we'll pay you the other half. They checked into some guest house somewhere, bankers in town. Then, this was like 15 years ago, let's say 14 years ago, they sat down and we started talking and I was teaching. By after 10, 15, 20 minutes, more than half of them were standing. They were screaming, they were writing, they were screaming. I didn't quote the scripture. Just imagine if it's, if it's only Bible I know. When I finished, they paid me the other money. And that money helped me at that time. I came to church, I bought instruments, some instruments we didn't have there with that money. So, when you understand, all you know is Bible. If you are a pastor, you don't know any other thing. You are a young lady, all you know is your artist, songs, and music, and oh, there's nothing, business, no idea, this, no idea, that, no idea. There's nothing you bring to the table when it's time to discuss issues. There's nothing. Ex expand your brains. Deep, think deep. Be properly informed. Before when you hear Chelsea, you think he's dry gin. Be properly informed. So, mental maturity, all of these things, you have to know them before you get married. Because when you get married, you already have children, have a partner, you can have that time that you have now. Amen. Verse 14, 24, verse 14 of Genesis 21, verse 14. Oh boy. I'm talking of the things to do before friendship. I've not even started. He, he. Are you sure you still want more? Yeah. It came to pass, the damsel said, It came to pass, the damsel said, To whom I shall say, Lay down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. She shall say, Drink, I will give thy camels, drink also. 
let the same be that let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac and thereby shall know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master now how many of you know camels drink a lot of water in fact it is scientifically proven that one camel can drink 30 gallons not 30 liters liters of water let's say 20 liters one camel can drink 30 that is why if you see them they, they move so slow so it can take 30 times 20 that's 600 so for somebody to say i will give all thy camels imagine one camel 600 liters let's say they are 10 6 000 industrious industrial maturity what can you bring with your hand as a man can you do something that brings money legitimately as a lady you are too special too important to think that's a man that will give you money any man that wants to support you surely compliment what you're already doing your body was given to you as the temple of God not for fundraising Are you listening? Industrious. What can I say this to you? Relationship is expensive. Oh. You want to marry? Very soon, as you marry that girl, when the parents are sharing bills, they will share your own as in-law. Oh, you don't know? They will share your own. So our brother-in-law, our auntie, died. This is you and your wife's bill. I'll be asking myself, Mami Kilam. <laughs> you must. Industrious. Do something with your hand. Do something with your brain. You see, that's why people want to marry somebody like them. Somebody that can have capacity to contribute. Your children want to look up, parents they look up to. You see, that is why even having brain. Being intelligent is something very, that will benefit your children. Some children will bring a, a assignment to their parents. And I'm you know that children of these days, their assignment is very hard. Children of these days, their assignment is so hard. If Bola left the house at 8 p.m. and by 10 p.m. Bola was not back, but around 2 p.m. Bola was seen around the house. Around this, they say, where is Bola? Am I police? <laughs> What's my business? Am I police? If Bola left the house, <laughs> they should go and call police now. That's my assignment with Josie. What's my business with Bola? Get the police, police, police to look for Bola. If X minus 2Y plus 6 over 16, find X. What's my business with X? What did X do to me? If 3,000 naira was given to Jimmy, Jimmy spent <laughs> 2,500. And Jimmy also bought this, 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 this. How much was left with? If Jimmy wants money, let me give Jimmy so we can rest. Let all of us rest. <laughs> Just imagine an Olodo, Mario Olodo. <laughs> Everybody in that house with <laughs> One boy. One boy did, did, did that notice the boy was not coming to some medium work to him anymore. The boy stopped coming. The father said, How do you know you have grown? You now do your homework by yourself. He said, No, no, no. I have an uncle across the road that does it for me. Why don't you bring your daddy? No, 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 no. All the way you did that. <laughs> Industrious, you've got to work with your hands. There is money. There's money around you. Every day money is flowing around you. But your idleness and laziness is not letting you see it. Amen. Amen. Relationship is expensive. You must be that person that understands how to be industrious. Proverbs 21, 24 also. How to be industrious. How to have financial intelligence. Financial intelligence. I'm still talking of being industrious. Industrious. You know, there are pillars of finance. For, for, for when I was doing studying financial intelligence those days, it helped me a lot. It helped me. I am never broke. Never. 
And it's not a function of, oh, one money came somewhere. It's financial intelligence. I am never broke. For the past 20 years of my life, I've never been broke. Now, when I say I've not been broke, I don't mean that I've always had money everywhere. But I've never come to a point in my life where, hey, I don't have, no, because of financial intelligence. Financial intelligence gives you, there are three pillars to finances. The first is saving, spending, and investment. That's the number one pillar. Saving, spending, and investment. Know what to spend. Have a limit. Know what to spend. There are things, there are things you must not buy even if you like them. You don't need them. You like them. Appreciate somebody as who has them. Can I see this your phone? Wow, man, this camera is sharp. Wow, wonderful. Give them back. Are you listening to what I'm saying? As you appreciated it, you already have an idea that the camera of an iPhone so and so is sharper than an iPhone so and so. You, that's knowledge for you. After that, give it back. Don't say, hey, I'm going to buy. The one you have, is it crying? There is somebody also that wants the type of phone that you are using. Know what to spend. Know how to save. Spending, savings, investment. Know how to invest. Many people that want to invest in building, in building of houses and the rest. Some people say they want to build houses um, to live in or to put tenants and the rest. It's not a good investment. Building a house to resell is a good investment. Buying a plain land to resell. But building a house to not put tenants and be getting money is not a good investment. Let me give you an example. You're looking at me confused. Let me give you an example. For example, you build a house with 35 million. Eh? You buy land. Land is cheap. There are lands of 10 million, 15, 20. You now build three bedroom flats or put three bedroom flat, two. You spend a total of 50 million or 60 million to build it, put tiles. How much is three bedroom flat in Aoji? Let's say 500. Average of five, 600. You have two of that. 600, 600, that's 1.2. And you build the house 60 million. In 10 years, you have raised 12 million. In 10 years. In 20 years, you have 24 million. So in 40 years, you have 48 million. You have not made the 5 million, 50 million you use. In 48 years, Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying? Are you, are you learning something? So it's a useless investment. But you can get a land, build a big hall, and give people shops, break shops, break several shops, break several shops. Are you following what I'm talking about? Break them to shops. Then in that big place, you have like 50 shops. This one is paying 150. That one is paying 200. That one is paying this. That. So at the end of a year, you are getting like 7, 8 million. In less than 4, 5, 6 years, you have gotten your money. Or you just buy a land. Leave it. Don't talk. Make sure it's in a prime place. Don't talk. When individuals are coming to price, you don't answer them. Individuals don't have money. It's institutions that have money. When they are coming, don't talk. When a bank approach you, that place you, you have, we want to add it to our premise. Bank will pay any amount. Yes, sir. So when they say somebody wants to buy the land, what does he do? He say, um, now one market say, no, 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 no. They say, see, they want to buy the land. We want to buy the land. There's one bank. Oh, they say they want that. Eh, let's talk. A land you bought was one so amount. The bank he said, tell the, not tell the bank. Too many banks are disturbing me, but I don't know. <laughs> So, financial intelligence contains spending, saving, investment. The second thing about financial intelligence is ad hoc. Ad hoc. Ad hoc, ad hoc is called, another word for ad hoc. Ad hoc. A D H O C. Another word for ad hoc is miscellaneous. There are people that they will spend money until the money finish. What's, do you have sense? You get to a point you don't even have money for bike. Don't keep yourself in that condition. There must be money kept somewhere because there are some emergencies that you can't run from. Some ladies haven't gone through their monthly flow. They have nothing for pads and the rest. They are that, they, they don't empty. And what did they empty themselves on? Hey. Are you listening? 
There must be money you kept somewhere, even if it's 5,000, even if it's 10,000, no matter how small. Keep something that if a jungle mature, these are now so bad, you must have something for back. One day, there was money on my table in the house. Some lots of money. And my son came. Tell me, want money? I said, take the other one there. He gave somebody to buy something. He came back, Daddy, I want to buy something. I said, there's no money in the house. Daddy. Daddy. I said, that one, no. That one is, they don't touch it. How about that? said, no, they don't touch it. I said, sit down. In your life, as a man, you must have money you keep that you don't touch. It's in case anything happens, the family can have. He said, yeah, Daddy, something has happened now. Now I need money. <laughs> <laughs> Children are terrible. <laughs> See, something has happened now. now. I, need, I say nothing happened. The one you want is with mouth. Nothing happened. You won't get it. You need that. Because there can be emergencies. One day, I have a little daughter. My little child is six years old. I was talking with mama one day. We were just discussing. We discussed into the night. 1 a.m. My daughter, she was in her midst. She was lying down. She just turned to his daddy. I said, yes. He said, I want to eat suya. 1 a.m. They, they make in the house. They do, they do make that in the house. But I asked the mother. The mother said there's none in the house. That means I have to go out. 1 a.m. And I said, I'll get in the morning. Daddy, no, no, no. I want it now. <laughs> Suya. I started cracking my brain. Which brain will I use on this girl to make her sleep? I tried. I said, ah, no, 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 no. no. At night, eh? Suya. It's not, my, not, not good though. If you eat suya like this and you now sleep and you sleep, you wake up with the suya, things will come out of your body. Different bad, bad things will come out. I will eat it, I will not sleep. <laughs> I've taken too much time. Industrious, you gotta be industrious. Don't forget, I said savings, spending, investment, hard work, and advice. You need now advice is when you have grown, you now have so much money, you now need expert advice on how to invest. It's experts that will come to you and tell you, ah, there's this business that produces money now. There's this business you put your money in. That's why you need expert advice because the experts are in the field. They are vast. They know what to put money in now. I have experts who call me and say, hey, Papa. There's one place now, in social place. Lands are very cheap. But we project <laughs> that in the next 10 years, the place you call Maitama now. Some people knew it with Maitama 20 years ago. And they bought lands. They, when they bought, a man in, told me he bought land in Maitama in Asokoro. That when he bought land, he bought one 15,000. He plot. He bought like 20. And he bought it like 30 years ago. Land in Asokoro, a plot now is about a billion. So imagine 15,000 naira 30 years ago to a billion. That's what experts will tell you. They'll say, no, no, no. Now, this business, now you have some money, put it in this, put it. That's what you need to know. They are projected, estimated things that will bring revenue. So they tell you to buy ahead of time. When you grow to that level, you have such counsel. So you are swimming in financial abundance. People think it's just only kingdom investment and faith and you don't understand that there's a pillar of counsel that people receive are you following me there are people that have come to me papa i want to do this business in this church many times i want to I say no don't do it you lose it's a function of my intelligence as if you put this thing now you lose you lose hey, what do i do i say wait what how much do you have as capital I say this mm, put money in this mm, put money in that so when you have that financial intelligence as a, as a person, you are never broke. You never get to that point in your life when there is nothing to bring on the table. I said, these are the things that you must have. I have like 11 of them. I can't, I can't kill myself. I'm tired. Let me focus on what I want to share. I'm just, those are even things I'm supposed to talk about. Let me now. <laughs> I've taken too much time, right? All of these things are how you arm yourself. Please just get my books. I think you will get some things from. 
arm yourself, things you must have before you start thinking of entering a relationship. Then, these are things you must have. Alright? Then, when you meet the person, there are things you must see in the person to know if this is the one you want to spend your life with. Are you seeing the difference? You already have. So in choosing a partner, what are the things you look for? I'll give you two or three and then I'll take questions. I'm sorry, I have like seven of that, but I spent so much time on the other. So I said I will do four series of teachings so that you understand because today I can't even get to what you do in courtship. Many of us don't know what we do. That's why the devil tells us what to do. This is the truth now. When you don't know what to do, the devil will tell you what to do. In courtship, there are things to do. You'll be so shocked when I start teaching you. You'll be like, What? That before you know it, you engage yourself in those things before you get married. And you see yourself, you're so busy. You see, sin is a product of an idle mind. If a person is not doing anything, will he just stay like that? You know, girl, have you noticed that poor people always have many children? No, but it's true now. He doesn't have work. He doesn't have office. You know, Bob Piki. You see the woman who carried two small children, she's still pregnant again. The man will just sit at home. Fire down, fire down. Fire down in the morning. Fire down, they have to no work. Fire down. That's why you see most women in the village. They are no more straight. That's why they are working. The man have fire down, fire down. Why? Plenty. I saw a lady, she has 13 children. Yes, yes. So I said, madam. She was pregnant again. I said, madam. He said, ah. That in our God uh, for, for, for our place. We know they stop until God say, May we stop. I say, Oh, really? God will shout from heaven. Stop! They wait. <laughs> to choose a partner, choose someone who is matured enough to appreciate your difference. Somebody who is matured enough to know that you are not him is not you. Both of you are different. You see, we are different by reason of the, the background we come from. We are different by reason of our tribe. We are different by reason of how we look, how we think. Our, 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 our mental investment over the years. I appreciate you must understand when you are in a relationship with somebody that the, both of you are different. You are not the same. The way you think is not the way the person thinks. I wish you follow what I'm saying. Why there are crises and issues is because you, you have not yet adjusted to appreciate that though this person is like this, he or she is still unique. The fact that you don't think and act the way I think and act doesn't make you less. For example, I don't like details. I don't like details. I don't like details. Don't tell me everything. You tell me to the last. As you want me to understand everything. Once I have a glimpse, an idea of what you are saying, it's okay for me. I don't like details. Do you understand what I'm talking about? One of, these, one of the signs of people don't like details is that they are not patient. They don't like, they can just tell them a few things. My wife likes details. If you are telling my wife anything, you have to, ex, you have to, because she will keep, even when you think, she knows what you are saying. She will still give you questions. To be sure that you know what you are talking about. So I'm not going to say because she likes details, I don't like details. That means um, uh, there's a problem. No. Appreciate the difference between you and somebody else. There's always, and I've seen marriages in America, Europe, London, everywhere. I'm telling you, the man is 55. The woman is 50. They are still fighting because this thing was not resolved. They don't understand that they are different by their backgrounds. By their trainings. You have to adjust. When my younger brother wanted to go and get married, he told me, he's a girl, want to marry. I said, that's nice. And I said, we should go to the place. He married from the West, Yoruba place. And you know Yoruba, you must do ballet. I almost had chest pain. When I saw the first family, we went down. Apostle. You apostle. <laughs> we went down once, went down twice. I said, what? Well, they said, you must go there like 15 times. I said, that's welcome. Eh? 15 is welcome. How many is well done? <laughs> eh? Went down, went down, went down. And now come on, say, come. Don't they monetize this thing? This thing don't they just pay? 
Say, no, it's tradition. It's the last respect. I said, I didn't disrespect them. Let me do. Say, no. So I, I prayed through the night. In the morning, we had to go to do payment and all that. I prayed through the night. So I overslept. We had to be there by 7. I woke up by 7.30. They were already waiting for me. Ah, so you, I said, I slept off. And now God, I said, for coming late, we have to do another one. And I now went to court. We went down. I had, we kept doing that, kept doing that, kept doing that, kept doing that, kept doing that. When I now stood up, did not tap our back. Hello, hello. The man that was tapping, it's like I just don't strangle his hand because my chest. I'm like, what kind of thing is that? But that's their background. You are the one who wants a wife. They didn't come to you, you came to them. So you must follow their background. We are different. There are cultures that don't believe they should kneel down to greet you. But as the culture of the, the young man in, in, in the West has to touch is the floor to greet an elder. So you cannot say, oh, that girl does not kneel down or that brother, my, he saw my father, he didn't even prostrate. It doesn't come from your culture. You are the one that went to marry a white boy. Why do you expect him to kneel down? He will shake your father's hand. In your mind, you are lacking Oibo. Huh? I, you see, I don't like stress. I want to marry a white man because all these black men, nonsense. They stress somebody. No problem. There are lots of things that goes with marrying a white man. One of them is that he's going to be himself. Are you following what I'm saying? He's not going to see your father be say, Welcome, sir. Sir, for what? You call him by his name. Hi, Jack. Eh? <laughs> Baba, man. My father. <laughs> because no, that's what he is. So as you are desiring him because he doesn't give you problem, also adjust to who he is. I wish you were following what I'm saying. He's going to walk to your father and give your father a handshake. You say, how are you doing? Are you okay? You've got a beautiful daughter. And in front of your father, he has married you already. In front of your father, he will kiss you in front of your father. And that impains fathers. <laughs> he pains fathers. In front of him, they are kissing the daughter. Say, ah! Appreciate differences. Once you appreciate that you and this person, I've, I've several times I've done single, I've told you that when I got married to mama, there were lots of differences. Differences. Amen. Amen. There are some of the differences that are very embarrassing to me, so I won't talk about those ones. But the ones that are not embarrassing, I can tell you. Me, I can sleep. You can be doing, ay, 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 yo, oh, yo, 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 and I'll be sleeping. I like noise. How many of you are like me? What do you me? If I would not, I would sleep off. If my wife wants to sleep, every year must be like cemetery. See, I seen one single noise. Sometimes I would reduce TV to the lowest. She would turn. I was like, mm, mm. I said, I understand. Boom, I'll turn it off. And when it's dark like that, and there's no noise, I can't sleep. I'm asking myself, <laughs> which is the apple? <laughs> Why is every year quiet? I can't sleep. No, if every year is too quiet, I can't. Over the years, guess what? I had to start learning to adjust. That's why marriage is sacrificial. It's sacrifice. You have to meet yourself at some point. You know, there are some people, once you can't adjust, don't think of marriage. I have to start adjusting. Now as I speak to you, I can stay one week. I don't turn on my TV. I hardly turn on. Why? Over time, I got used to what she likes. And now, she can be in a place that is a little bit noisy. Even if it's not totally off, she will sleep. Because that's the kind of person she married. Are you seeing the adjustment? I told you also, when we eat, <laughs> I've told you the story. We are using our hands. Not cut Larry's, you are eating swallow. I pounded the arm. We are, the way I was trained, when you wash your hand, you eat. When you finish, you wash again. Abby? When my wife caught one, she eat. She will wash that one away from her hand. And you put fresh water. She will eat again. She will wash. I say, finish the food. Say, no, no, no. Nothing must stay on my palm. I don't know if you understand me. She will wash that one off. Take another one. It she will wash that hand off. So over time, you have to bring several places of water to keep washing. <laughs> Naturally, when I take bread, I bite my bread, 
drink my tea. But my wife would dip. So me, I'm like, what it be this? But there are some of you looking at me and saying, now then the thing is sweet. I look at your life. <laughs> so she will ask me, she will say, wait, oh, wait. She will say, how this bread, how, how is it in your mouth? There's nothing inside. Ordinary bread. You just put it in your mouth. You now come and put it on top. In your mouth. Why? Eh? See, you have to, thank you, baptize the bread first. <laughs> so you got to appreciate. And you see, this is why people quarrel. Because they think they must be the same. They must think alike. And that's what I was telling you about the difference between a man and a woman. Women, are, women, are, actually, if a woman enters this place now, She's looking around. She's checking details. She noticed this is this, this is this, this is that, this is this, this is this. She look around. She can tell you about that usher. In fact, she can even tell you about an usher who has an attitude problem without talking to her. This is the usher. She get attitude. Bad attitude. I just said that she don't look like this. Bad attitude. You as a man, you're like, ah, are you both friends? How did you know the attitude? Ah, the attitude. How do they even allow ushers like this in this church? There are people that will come to a church. They can notice many things. As the guy enter, what he's seeing is Papa is preaching. That's the way man's brain is wired. So you must learn that once you understand that we are not the same, we are friends. Number two, in choosing a partner, you must also understand the person's love language. Someone whose love language is easily, you cannot marry somebody whose love language is not easily adjustable. Love language means the way that partner express his dimension or a dimension of expressing love. You have problems now because you want your love language to be that person's love language. You are not even caring. You did call me at night. He doesn't like to talk at night. He wants to sleep. Your love language is somebody calls you at night and gist with you and gist with you. He says, talk me to sleep. Now God, now God, they give person sleep. Where will I like it's God that gives you say, talk me to sleep. That's their love language. There are some people who can give you cash, but they don't buy you gift. You don't get what I'm saying. They can give you money. Say, buy me gift. Ah, ah. They now think of how to enter one shop. Now think of what to buy. That's his love language. So you now say, I can't marry that guy now. Say, why? Because he doesn't, he doesn't like buying gift. That's his love language. You must understand to adjust. It's you that will now start telling the person, when you are coming, buy me, buy me a gift. It's like I say, buy, buy. This is where they sell it. You've got to start over time teaching the person. After a while, the person gets used to it. Love language. And sometimes when you meet people whose love language are almost like yours, it's better for you. My wife doesn't like gifts. She doesn't care about gifts. So it makes it easier because I don't like to buy. <laughs> it made it very easy for me. I can count money and give you, but you say, okay, uh, this is coming. Go and buy. Ah, I'll be thinking. Maybe you have leg. I, mean, I have leg. Maybe you can go and buy this thing yourself. So she's not bothered. You can buy my wife something very expensive. If, you, if it becomes a problem, if you tell her the amount, she'll be thinking of how many business she can do that will bring profit with that thing. So she doesn't, she doesn't bother if I say, oh, I, I saw one day I wanted to be, I went to surprise her. I said, let me do small love. I went to a shop. They were selling jewelries. I now called her on phone. I said, honey, I'm in the shop. I think it was South Africa. I can't know. I said, I'm in the shop. I want to buy you something. They are selling jewelries. I said, let me call you on video so you can see that. I called her on video. She saw them. She said, nice. Hey, who did they? Make go. I said, honey, look here, look here. She was talking to children. She just said, nice. She was talking to children. Who did they? You should go and carry this thing. You, come on there. Go carry. I said, look at me. He said, hey, what do you say you want to buy again? I said, jewelries. He said, oh, he's fine, fine, fine. Where these children know? I said, look at me. After I, and I said, okay, I'll pick it for you. And he said, hey, how much? I told her, this is the amount. Come on there, 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 come on there. Come on there, leave there, leave there, leave there. I said, no, he said, leave there. Come on, for, for the, did I tell you my neck has problem? Leave there, leave there, leave there, leave there. Bring the money, bring the money. Bring. I said, hey, small romance when I see so when the persons love there are people <laughs> there are, <laughs> I 
I'm wasting your time. There are some people that like, please, whatever I say, don't condemn anybody. There are some, there are some people that like flowers. Why are you laughing? There are some people that like rose flowers. Just buy them a rose. They like it. There are some people, if you buy them flowers, they are wondering if you see them as a goat. <laughs> Why you buy me flowers? <laughs> That's their love language. There are people that, there's a way they express love. You must understand. And you must adjust to, you don't get offended because that's not how you like. There are some of you, there's something you like. So when someone does not do what you like, you say, uh, this one is not my, we are not compatible. That's not true. You can be compatible with somebody who has a different love language. What you do is to adjust your love language to meet that person's love language. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> so, that's the problem they have. That's why husbands and wives, in fact, eh, one of the things, before I got married, I never thought I could get married the way I was. I never thought. I was not a good person at all. I don't like wala. If you give it to me, I give it to you back. Back bush. And my mouth. This is my mouth. Ah, yeah, yeah. In school, then, know what they call wording? Yes, Yabbing. If anybody offend anybody, they'll come and pay me to go and face the person. They'll just give money and they'll be following me. They'll say, hey, boy, he brought his father. I told him, I said, your papa, your papa, your papa take my money now. When we beat your papa that day, he said, my papa. <laughs> he brought his father. <laughs> when he brought his father, he was, where is that boy that's calling me a thief? I said, sorry, sir. Sir, sir, if you have no guess, yes, so you follow your picking the con school. Ah! My principal said, in my office. So, my mouth wasn't, it wasn't good at all. So, I just told myself, in fact, it was a concern to me. Brethren were worried. In fellowship, I told you in fellowship then, because anytime I preach, more than half, people will laugh, 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 laugh. So, one time, the escorts called me that they want to do deliverance for me. That they, they, they now showed me the Bible, what the demon inside me was called. That was called sp spirit of foolish jesting. It's in the Bible. So, they now say I should kneel down. So, as I knelt down, the place was smelling. They say in the name of Jesus. I say, wait, wait, wait. Who mess? Who mess? <laughs> they burst into laughter. They say, nobody can deliver you. Get out, get out, get out. Over the time. But today, what they thought was a demon, if I preach in places, people come there because they want to be happy. And I don't go to the pulpit. I don't go to the pulpit to intend to. I just go there myself. I don't pretend. If you are watching my program in America, this is how I talk. Europe, this, I don't go there. Glory to God, amen. Glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. You know the word of God said the other day. I was, I, was, I was browsing through the book of Ecclesiastics and the word of God was just talking to me in my spirit. I just flew from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I just came from the UK. And the Lord, ah! Come on there. <laughs> Time is up. I gotta close. <laughs> I have so much, no time. The Lord bless you. So, Peter, we're gonna we're gonna have another day, right? Because I don't want you to go home when it's dark. Give the Lord a clap, our friend. Clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands. All right, we're gonna ask. You may be seated for a while. I don't want to get that. Maybe the next 10, 20 minutes before it gets to 6.30, I'll release us so we can go. If you have a question, you can ask me. If you want to ask it publicly, you're very, very free. Nobody's going to... This ministry, we don't judge people. We don't, um, we don't condemn people. Be free to ask the question. And if you... It's a written one. Make sure you have it written and you ask the question. Feel free to ask whatever question it is at this time. So if you have a question, put up your hand. Let me see. One. Who's the next person? What's your name, madam? 
Beatrice, what's your name, sir? Brother Daniel, number two. I saw your hand up this way. Huh? You're written already. Okay. That's number two. Who's number three? What's your name, sir? Sir? Nicholas, Nicholas number three. Do we have number four? What's your name, sir? Sir? John is number four. Is that number four? What's your name, sir? Luke, number five. Sir? Glory, number six. Virtue, number seven. Sandra, number eight. We'll stop at number nine. Ma? Joy number nine. Okay, let's start. Number one. As we're doing that, we'll, we'll um, and please, I go this way. We'll take two, we'll read one. We'll take two, we'll read one. Okay. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. My question is if you're in a relationship and you have prayed, and God has shown you that this person is the right person. But the person is not acting well in the sense that he's demanding sex. Because there are some men in this country, Nigeria, that will tell you if you don't get pregnant, plenty, I will not come plenty. and see your parents. I will not pay your diary. Plenty. I will not do this. I will not do that. So as a woman, what are you supposed to do? Okay. There are some men that want to... You, hold on. There are even some fathers... There are even some fathers, biological fathers, that will tell you that if somebody doesn't have a child for you, there's no proof that the person can be fertile. Okay, in the hospital, there's what they call fertility test. If you go there, it will prove. Let him take you to fertility test. It will prove. Any man that you hold with sex will never be satisfied with sex. Even after marriage, he will go out and keep having it. And he will not treat you well. There are still people. Do you know God can show you somebody? This is who God showed you. And yet because of his attitude, he disqualified himself from the plan of God. You, you are not the one that has a problem. He disqualified himself. And anytime you mess up, God has a backup. You are not following what I'm saying. So stop saying, oh, this is the person God showed me. How come he, God said two million people will enter the promised land. Only two entered. The rest people you saw that entered the promised land, we are a mixed multitude. Those people that entered the promised land, we are under 40. Only Caleb and Joshua, we are above 40. Those people that entered the promised land, we are born. They were born on the way. You are not following what I'm saying. 40 years in the wilderness, they were born. Bible called them mixed multitude. So maintain your stand. The will of God is not stronger than the word of God. The word of God says no. So anything you call the will of God that perverts the word of God is not the will of God. The will of God must be in alignment with the word of God. So the word of God that says don't do this supersedes. Even if you have to wait long, wait, the right person is coming. Praise Master Jesus. Daddy, thank you for this word of an opportunity. Daddy, I want this one you are ask... thanking me. We won't live here today. <laughs> Your question Daddy, I want would to be ask long. A question. When a young lady who has been in a relationship for a very long time decide to leave the relationship to follow another person, can that person continue with that lady on the basis of knowing that you maybe you have done so much for this young lady or you have been wait, together wait, for long? Wait. Wait. S say it again. Sir. Quiet. Please let me understand. Wait, let me understand. Wait. Say it again. Like, for instance, you've been with somebody, somebody for long. For a long time. Yes. And the person left you to another, another person. Can that other guy continue with the lady? Can that the guy that she went to? Yes. Continue with the lady? Yes. Can she marry her, like, be with her? I don't understand. Can somebody explain? Can you explain that? Uh, so I think the question is this, that is saying that can that person still cope with the character that made her leave, leave this person? What do you mean no? Yes? Let me answer. Let me, is, that, is that the question? What is the question? If somebody, you are with somebody, the person leaves you and go and meet somebody else, can that person if she met continue with the relationship? Yes! Wait! Is 
understand the question? Exactly. The person can continue. Somebody was with somebody for a long time. He now left that person and came to meet you. Why not you continue but be ready for her to leave you too and go and meet somebody else? Why not? Continue. Because what she did to that person, she'll do to you. So be ready. Any lady who has invested, a man has invested on and you are aware and you take her in. You know, a movie that didn't finish in part one will continue. So you do not, you have to be careful because there's, there's something that made her live there. Yeah. You don't. You don't. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, this question says, it says, sir, can a Christian marry a lady who loves God and she is also a Christian, but her mother is an idol worshiper? Are you marrying her mother? You are marrying the lady, but just be ready for die by fire, die by fire, die by fire. <laughs> because you are entering a battle zone. You can marry, but know what you are know what you are entering. That this one is a warfare. You can, of course, you are marrying the person. If you are entering that kind of family, you are going to combat and contend with forces. But if she's in agreement with you in the place of prayer, and she knows that there is a problem that needs to be dealt with, you are at an advantage. Where it becomes a problem is that she's a believer, you are a believer, you are seeing the mother as an idol worshiper, and she's telling you there's nothing wrong. Leave my mother, or leave my mother for me. Leave my mother. There's nothing wrong. Forget all this idol. There's nothing wrong. You're going to have a problem. Because the enemy will take advantage of that. But if she's ready and she acknowledges that this is the work of the devil that they have to confront, you have an advantage. Number three. Who is number three? Number four. Okay. Thank you, Daddy. Yes, my question goes like this. Which is the best, the issue of love language? And when you look at the contemporary issues of our country today, how can we really express our love language? Because sometimes that the, your experience you had, or you have had, I can say those are past years. But what is happening in Nigeria now? <laughs> I like this guy. Clap your <laughs> I understand. Go ahead. What is happening in Nigeria now? If we are really fashua, yeah. When there is no resources, love language becomes deteriorating. Because sometimes some person. No, 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 no. I think you should ask a question. You shouldn't tell me. Okay, okay, okay. Ask the question. Okay, okay sir. How can we communicate our love language without resources? Now, let me explain something to you. Love language is not only about money. Hello? Love language is not only about what? Money. There are people, hold on. There are some people, no matter how much you give them, they still want you to be calling them. They like phone calls. That's love language. Are you following me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? That's love language. There are people that, there are some, I'm not sure you know, there are ladies who are with guys who don't have money. They don't have money. They are not committing sin. But the young man knows the right things to say. The right words is love language. Gifts and help, financial support is only part of it. The right thing, there are some young men, if they talk, if they, their mouth, if they talk, monkey, monkey, we come down from tree without banana. It's love language. <laughs> they are very, they are very expressive. So love language, some of them, some people actually like a lady because of the way the lady carries their family. Our own love language is that she is a family person. When she enters your life, she wants to talk to your brothers, she wants to talk to this, she wants to talk to that, she wants to bring everybody together. It's a love language. And there are some ladies, when they enter, it's you they know, they don't care about your brother, your sister, no, no, no. Are you, you feel what I'm saying? Your language, the way you communicate love to your partner, it's not necessarily just money. It can be care. It can even be prayers. What is it? What are you going through? I'll talk, I'm going to pray about it. And there are some men that will say, the reason I like this woman, she can pray. 
So there are different ways to communicate it. I understand the way Nigeria is. And anybody that is here expecting mo money at this time. Ah. It's terrible because everywhere is bad. But we are going to get there. Things are going to change in our country. In Jesus' name. Do you understand me, sir? You understand? Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I have two questions to ask. And the number one question is this. Now, um, my heart is going for a lady. Like, Shh. hello, for instance, like I have a lady I'm admiring. And I'm praying God over the lady like, Lord, is this the right person for me? Mm. I'm praying for the lady like, I want to have this girl as my soulmate. Huh? But in the process of praying, I'm seeing another person. But wait, you are seeing a person in prayer. I'm seeing another person in prayer. In prayer, okay. But my mind is yearning for this other girl that I'm praying about. What am I going to do? That's that is number, number one. one. Then number two. Then number two. Um, I like I'm having a uh, a mind for a lady. And the lady I'm having in mind for says like fling with me very well. But there are some certain things that I don't love, I don't like. Like somebody who is going to going for wasking and those stuff. I'm not used to those stuff. But if the person I'm going for love those things and I'm going for that person, how am I going to do in that kind of relationship? Thank you. You are not married. How do you know he's going for waxing? And anyway, that's two. There are two things. Number one, the first thing he says is about him praying concerning somebody and is seeing in his revelation somebody else. Now, there are two things. I won't give you a straight answer. Then you have to be extremely sensitive to the spirit because Satan can bring a picture to corrupt God's plan for your life. This is who God is showing. The devil is bringing a picture. So to, to divert you from the plan of God. One. Number two, it can also be God saying, that is not what I want for you. This is what I want for you. At that point in your life, you've got to take both of them off your mind. Are you following me? The one that you are praying about, the one whose picture is coming and say, Lord, I need your will. I don't want to be in a state of confusion. There is what you call the will of God. It's what you call the perfect absolute will of God. Lord, I don't just need your will. I need your perfect will in this matter. So get both of them off your mind in the place of prayer. And the revelation will drop in your spirit on who the person is. That's one. Number two, I think I asked it when I was teaching. You are, somebody does some things you don't like. You've got to adjust yourself. Relationship is not just about you. You are not a dictionary. That you are the one that gives interpret interpretation to everything. No. You've got to adjust. There are some things the person likes. There are some things you like. You have to meet. I gave you an example of myself. You have to meet somewhere. Do you understand me? I like this. I don't like this. Over time, the person may stop it. The person may continue. You have to adjust to say you like it. As a young person, you can, you can say now, I don't just like this. But when you, when you grow further, and resp in fact, there are some things responsibility makes you like. You now have too many responsibility. You don't even have time to notice certain things anymore. You are cracking your head on paying school fees. You are cracking your head on, on paying rent. You are cracking your brain. So you are not even noticing whether somebody is waxing or not waxing. You are not conscious of that because what is in your head now is school fees. That's why some women will say, oh, you don't appreciate me. The man's brain. A woman was pregnant. A woman of God. I heard a woman of God say something. That the woman was pregnant. The woman came to her. He said, I'm six months pregnant. My husband is not even telling me I look good. I look this. I look that. My husband is not even saying how I look. And I'm six months pregnant. This, this, this. This woman of God wanted to tell her. Men don't have that kind of time because a baby is coming. What the man is thinking of is different. So she didn't want to answer. She now called another man who was a pastor to respond to her. You know, say what's the problem? See, my husband, no, he has not come to sit down with me to say, "Ah, you look nice for this load you are carrying. Thank you, thank you." You know, 
So when he was telling the man, the man said, Ah, thank you, care. When are you to say three months? The man is looking for money. Or not to take care of children. Do you understand that? What he's thinking is different by responsibility. Growth and responsibility changes mentality. The things you think you don't like now, when responsibility comes, you'll be surprised how you cope with them over time. Yes. Thank you, sir. Daddy, what's your counsel for someone who is in a very distant relationship? For instance, you're in Nigeria and he's abroad, but he's very supportive. <laughs> you know, I'm on air. I'm on TV, so. Person, this is my view. This is what? So don't... Eh? And do not, do not, do not, um, do not, you can have your view on this, but this is my personal view. And in this ministry, we don't force things on people. This one ministry will leave people to believe what they believe, so long it's in line with the word of God. Most times, such relationships end up in pain. Most times, I can tell you in this church, as I travel, there are some daughters in church who are waiting for some guys abroad. I've been to have been abroad and I saw those guys with some other people. I cannot talk. No be me go spoil relationship. And she's still telling me that I see the passion. She's still saying that he that he pray for him. He has document problem. I say, Oh, Jesus. Because the person I saw that the brother with there, you can you know you, you can see two people and see commitment. People that will come to the program and preach and they wear the same t shirt over there. So it's already a serious relationship. And the sister is here. Brothers are asking her out and ready to marry. She's saying no. Because she doesn't want to hurt him. That's why you see I'm quiet. Personally, if a brother is traveling out abroad, I always tell them, don't keep this girl. Let her go. It's painful. But at the end of the day, you thank me for saying that. If you know you are going to a country, you can easily get your documents, come back and marry. It's okay. But these days, going abroad, America, Europe, you don't get documents that easy. It takes time. Are you following what I'm talking about? So, most times, my answer is, it depends on where they are going. Somebody, who, you go to, going to Ghana. He says, that long distance, what kind of distance? That one distance. He can pass road and come back. Pass road, come back. Do the wedding, enter one bus, go back. That's why we say abroad, I ask you where. The person is in Cameroon or the person is in Senegal. Enter with Barrow and just go to. <laughs> <laughs> but if but if it's that far, it comes, it can't go back. And that, that's on you. If it can't go back, that's on you. It comes from America. It can't go back because it does his visa and papers expire. The anger is going to be on you. So most times, those are things that you, both of you must talk over. There are some sisters who are waiting for a girl who has traveled 12 years ago. She started waiting when she was 27. Now she's 39. Come on. Come on. Come on. So I don't personally advise. What I'm saying that I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling. I don't want to finish the teaching now. And at the end, somebody says, ah, Papa, that was powerful. But Papa scattered my relationship. No, I, I, I personally do not advise anyone close to me to go into a distant, distant marriage is understandable. Okay, come, you go. There are children she will focus on. In fact, she already has a life. She has children. So part of her feminine problem is solved. She has children. But this one has no child, nothing. And the woman has a limit. There's, a, there's, a, 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 there's something they call it in English. Not menopause. There's an English word for it. And one is beyond that, that's gone. She's no more marketable. So we need to put that in place. I don't personally support it. Personally, I don't support it. Yeah. Praise the okay. Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my question is before the question, the, the teachings you normally do, we normally watch it online. One of the teachings you did one time was when you, after the teaching, you asked the brother what was the first sign you need to see. And you, the brother made mention that the first thing is that the peace of God must be in their heart. Now, I was in a relationship and 
After a while, last year, she found out that she was two years older than me, and I told her, I don't have a problem with that. We can actually move on. All of a sudden, one time, she now had a vision where they were having a meeting with the father, and the father told her that uh, for the age issue, they can't allow it. And I told her, God cannot give you a vision, and you, we can't pray about it or address it. But since she had that vision, everything scattered. And when, when we, I, said, I told her, Madam, leave that vision. Let's pray about the vision. This is vision. If God reveals something for you, we need to address it. God will not keep you in the dark. She said, no, she knows her vision, her vision come to pass. I said, before... What, what was the vision? The vision was what, that... What was the, the vision was that when she brought, they had a family meeting, and the father asked her, the person, she now told the person age and everything, but I told her, Madam, I know I don't have issue with the age of 18. So let her on what even break the relationship. And I told her, I said, Madam, this one you are keeping me in the dark. You are saying vision, 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 vision. Tell me, let's know what to do. Because I listen to my father and I listen to his message. I'm not, I don't stay here. But every youth meeting they do, we always download the message and we follow it back to back. Tell us what do we need to do. Later, she now told her father, she got back to me, she said, her father said, it's from different tribe. But my own problem was, since she had that vision, and I told her, she said, she does place that vision. I said, if God will show you, give you a vision, and God cannot address it, then that vision is not from God. And I was asking my own questions, what is the what's, place of vision for relations, for relations? The place of vision? Yes, sir. I've thought about that. You don't build relationship on vision. You don't build relationship on vision. In fact, you don't build when you say vision there are two kinds of vision there's the dream of the night people call it vision that's a trance there's a you sit down you just see another vision that's a trance too but there is vision for life which is dream your pursuit why you must be careful of anything you see that seizes your peace question it if she saw that thing both of you are supposed to hold your hands agree and okay calm down it is the pain you I can see it. <laughs> you must address it. Before I got married to my wife, there were things I saw that meant mm -mm, mm -mm. it was almost like a sickness. In fact, three days to my wedding, somebody came to me and said, God said I should not go ahead. And this is somebody I known as an authority. <laughs> as an authority. There are people that when they nurse a fear, the fear becomes their vision. A dream can come multitude of business. If she already was feeling scared that, ah, she found out she's two years older than you, she's only had that fear that, ah, what did my dad ask me? What did my dad ask me? That constant fear can become a vision. And that is why God does not show you anything that he cannot address. He doesn't show you. Most people get dreams and hear voices by reason of their concern. When I had my first two daughters, there's a prophet who met me. Sharp prophet. He said, the next one is a boy. I see it. I see it. I was just looking at him. What I was looking at him was that I'm not a... Yes, I'm not a gender person. I'm not a person... I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's far at the point, my wife was looking at me like I had a problem. Because there are people that ah, I want a boy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not a... Person, I'm not to me, a child is a child. I've never been a gender person. So he said, mm, it's a boy. It's a boy. I saw it clearly. A beautiful girl came. <laughs> After that one came, he came and said, Hmm. The Lord said he was actually talking about the one coming next. I said, Okay. He came. Another pretty girl came. The fourth one, he said, Hmm. The Lord said, this daughter of yours that is coming now. A handsome boy came. <laughs> and that's why it was his concern that was making him hear the voice. That doesn't mean he's not a prophet. Because there are other things he said that were accurate. But I'm not a, God knew I was not, I'm not a gender. In fact, any man who doesn't have daughters is missing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Daughters take care of fathers. But sons, 
Sons have more interest in their mothers. My friend, my son, my, my son is like my friend. He doesn't have my time. Hi, Dad. How are you? I said, fine. Pew, he's gone. My daughter is like, why are you like that? Are you okay? You are looking sad. Why are you not talking? Man like you, we ask you, why are you not talking? As what? <laughs> so, the mistake is that both of you were to stay and address it. You are broken now. You are apart. It's alright. Give yourself peace. Put it behind you. And move on. Alright. Number six. She said she cannot use the mic, so she wrote it out as she help her ask the question. She said, Daddy, what's your advice to a lady who has a man? You, do you know one of the reasons why people write is they don't want to identify exactly. themselves? You pointed at her and you're not reading her question. Ah, you're a terrible person. <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. All right, daddy. He said, what's your advice to a lady who has a man that trains her but always demands for sex? Now she's afraid of leaving the man because the man trained her in school. Please, what should I do? Oh. First of all, I feel for her. Secondly, I don't feel for her. Firstly, I feel for her because any man who has to take from you as a condition to help you has trapped you. That's the truth. You got to go. You cannot, you cannot stay there and be collecting the money and not dancing to his tune. So make up your mind to walk away knowing what you will lose. If our Christianity being a believer a child of God is having a readiness to lose things. As a young lady, there are things you would have gained before you're following Jesus, you are ready to lose it. That's the sacrifice of being pure. You've got to go. You cannot stay there. You cannot. You are in prison. You are in bondage. You've got to go. If I don't do this, you see, true love is not conditional. It's unconditional. It's, they, they just do what they want to do. They don't, there's nothing attached to it. So the lady has to make up her mind to live. Number one, for the sake of our faith in Jesus. That's paramount. And <laughs> this brother did not do the right thing at all. <laughs> God show you mercy. She has to leave. Who, who else? Praise God. No, no, hold yeah. on, sister. After I finish you. Whew. Okay. Thank you, sir. Papa, sir. What book will you recommend for someone that wants to grow his finance? His finance? Yes. Mama wrote a book on business. There are several books. Mama wrote a book on business, a business administration book. Mama wrote it. Get that one. And get um, ah, Prosperity Thou Art Lose. All those are kingdom books to operate kingdom mindset. I have a book, Prosperity Thou Art Lose. How many of you have read it? Okay, Go, get that book. It will help your finances a lot. Teaches you, even teaches you. There's another book I'm trying to remember. No, not you. It's another book. I talk about debt. I talk about savings. I talk about. I remember. So, eh? Secret of Good Success. There's a book. I remember the name. So, get books like that. And there are books by other men of God that talk on finance. There are some ministers of God that is their area of finance. Get their books. It will help you. So you understand how to... Um, some of the things I've said today about the investment and all. So some of you is eye-opener. Right? You learn something new. Because there are actually some people that think that they want to build a house so they can make money. No. You spend money to build a house to live there, to stay there. It's a different thing. So get those books. Start with those ones and over time you get other materials. So number, nine question. number nine. Number nine is here. Yeah. Okay, seven. Seven is here. Seven. She wrote okay. it down the question. Ah uh, ah. Uh, just read the question. If the person writes a question, the person does not want to be identified with the question. He said, What if you are with a man that is exhibiting an attitude that you do not like? And you are trying to correct him, but he's not taking the correction. What will you do? Okay. Amen. 
there are hold on there is a tone with which you correct somebody and the person will not take the correction number one if you want to correct somebody correct the person in love number two men are not wired to change at once men are not robots you can't just tell the man stop this then he will just stop no when you say stop over time once you want somebody to change give patience you give time for the person to change but the tone some of you looking at me now your parents when they are talking and they are shouting how do you feel say mommy mommy can't you just calm down and talk to me do you understand that doesn't mean that what she's saying you are not taking it but the tone there are some ladies who want to talk to a guy on a particular habit the way they will say it in fact some of them are so nasty they want to talk to you i was talking i was doing relationship teaching in Sierra Leone, and i was talking to them one of the things i said is that stop throwing stop shading a partner what do i mean by that is you see a coat you now carry the coat and put on your status <laughs> maybe maybe and you know he always views your status then you now put a write up under the coat maybe he now says something like maybe somebody that doesn't check on you all the time because he's busy he now say he now say a quote that say no matter how busy a man is if we have time for a woman he really loves you now post it on the internet I'll be oh, tell them I'm not feeling what I'm saying that is the most childish attitude very childish and you have, there are some people that have their heart is like stone you have posted more than 20 of such things it didn't change <laughs> it didn't ask you anything have conversations have conversations and give them time to change and also pray for him pray about it talk to God about it let him encounter God especially when it's something you know is affecting his faith in God some that affect his future some that affect his family talk to God about it God can change him number eight oh, oh, hello oh. all right number eight he said if you are dating someone and both of you love each other but the family of the boy are accusing you that because of you the lady the boy is no longer spending on the family as he used to what should you do what should i do as a lady but it's true now if the boy is no longer spending on the family why would they be upset let me explain something to you man is wired one way this is how a man is wired there are some people when they are in love they are like mumu it is you <laughs> as a lady that we need to bring him back to his senses. He buys you this, he buys you that. Have you sent mommy and money for rent? You bring him back to his senses. But you say, no, 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 I beg you. My younger brother will do that one. You? I will die here. Would die. <laughs> he said, wait. You bring him back to his senses. As a lady, what you should do, there are times when a man gives you support. If you are ready to settle down with him, he gives you support. Sometimes from the support he's giving you, send to his siblings. That guy, if the day he say he want to leave you, they'll kill him. His brother will kill him. For example, in my family now, my wife cannot be wrong. I'm the one that is wrong. I say, 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 say brother, now you, now you, now you. I say, ah. Because all my people in my family, up to my cousins, up to when they come, she will make sure everybody give this one clothes, give this one shoe, give this one this, give this one that. Give them something, I'll be shouting. Must you give them something? Because, ah, ah, why give them now? When I they are going, I say I don't have, she'll make sure. So I say, lady, that's your duty. He gave you 10,000. If it's 500, send mommy an airtime. The younger brother, send them. You are, that's the, those are the pe people you are going to be seeing for the rest of your life. Draw them close, don't scatter them. No, he give you 10,000 and you are still asking him, how much are you sending to your sister? It's not your business. And you say they should not gang up against you. Even God will support them. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not your duty to call because as a man, once he's like that, 
these are some men are only few men have enough sense to be doing for you and still remember their family it is you that should call to order the brother said once that remember, I see my brother eh, he's just asking me for money and he said, ah, you are the elder brother if you don't do it who will do it send it to him at that point you have become you are, you are not even married they are already calling you our wife because they know that you carry them along the parents have no fear they know once you enter the house everybody is going to be carried along so if you are saying they are attacking you there is no more spending on them we have to investigate is he no more spending on them for real if he's not spending on them really then they have a right to attack you and it's you that will not bring him back to his senses so he can know how to carry the family and because at the end of the day it's you that will suffer it. their brother is their brother it's you that will suffer it so you do not need that make sure you teach him how to take care of these people thank you sir is that the last is number nine the last is that the last okay i am industrious but my partner doesn't show interest in my business affair how should i handle this your partner may not show interest because he has his own business that's one number two i don't understand that question the partner does not support does not support sir no you should support to get a woman or a man who is ready to work with their hands is a treasure is a treasure to get a lady that does something that brings 1,000, 2,000, you don't know the gift you have. So as a young man, invest in such a person so the person can be better. As a lady, also invest advice, counsel. I heard about this. If you make your business do well, I have this, I'll support. So support each other because that's the future you are going to build. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, sir. I'll I just need your advice. If someone is in a relationship and the person did not even trust, not even believe the person, and does not, as in, he does not want to be part of the person, but just want to keep the person because the person is useful to him, what are your advice, please? Can you, can you be a little bit... I know you are trying to not to be direct. Can you just be direct a bit small? So as that I understand. Because I don't really understand the question. As in, you are in a relationship with a person. Mm. And the person don't trust you. Yes. Even when you tell the person the truth, he still believes your lie because of his past relationship. Because of his own past? Yes. And now using it to judge you when you are even honest with the person. And when you try to make him understand, he does not want to believe you. Mm. What and do does do? not and it knows you are hardworking, industrious. And it just wants to keep you, but it doesn't trust keep you. Keep you, but doesn't trust you. Okay. So what would the person do, please? This, this. Some of you already know my, what I want to answer. The way some of you know me so much in this church, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, let me surprise you. Let me answer from another angle. You, you know, you know one problem. Eh? One problem people have which I advise if you are coming out of a relationship where you were hurt don't enter another immediately heal first heal 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 because most then your next partner will be a victim I don't know if you're getting my point heal just heal if you are walking out somebody say no 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 for now I want to heal and if the person wants to ask you why do you need time don't tell them because they will take advantage of your heart and start acting like they are different only for them to do the same thing that that person did so don't give details to a person listen don't give details of your past relationship to anybody that is interested in you so that's one I've answered one number two trust is built if someone doesn't trust you over time give the person a reason to trust you one thing about a man is when you lie to a man he doesn't believe you again he doesn't be, especially when you know you lie and there are some women that they lie and they swear and when you catch them they quarrel on top of the lie so the man sees you as a, as anini osumbo condemn iron you are a crook to have that kind of heart. But there are people that when they say something not right, you don't even catch them. They come back to you and say, my spirit is 
troubling me. This is what I did. Such people, forgive them. Don't even talk. Just forgive them. Because that person still has a conscience. But the, the one, Shinarambo, the one <laughs> that, that, that doesn't have a conscience anymore. Are you listening? So trust is built over time. If a person doesn't trust, you just be patient with that person. Over time, trust will be built. Amen. Amen. I'll just take two. These are your papers. There are so many. The way I'm saying them. It's getting... It's almost 7 p.m. We have to close. Okay, sir. So three. The question says, you say, can a 40 foundation... Peter? Can we fix another date? Maybe in the next month or something? I don't know if you want us to continue. So next month, I'll give you a date for next month. We'll continue from here. I have so much I wrote. Can a 40 foundation frustrate a beautiful relationship between a couple who are cap uh, compatible and prayerful? And also, there's another one. Say, what is the largest, what is the largest duration for courtship? Okay, the first one, a faulty foundation can affect anything. Can affect business, can affect church, can affect relationship, can affect anything because everything is determined by what? Foundation. So if the foundation is bad, Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundation be destroyed, so if the foundation is faulty, it doesn't matter what you build on it. It doesn't matter. There are some people that need to go back and tell themselves some truths which they didn't tell themselves in their foundation. So they are living a life now because they didn't address certain things. In business, in marriage, in character. Yeah. Now, there is no time frame on courtship. But there is time frame on marriage. If you are courting somebody, it can never be too short, but it can be too long. And also for you to get married, there's a time frame. A boy who is 22, 20, should not marriage. A boy who is 20 should not think of relationship. A girl that's 19 should not think of relationship. If a girl 20 should not think of relationship. Yeah. If you're going to talk of relationship, maybe 22, 23. Because at 20, you don't yet know yourself. And if you don't know yourself, you'll be looking for yourself in somebody. So you've got to know yourself, understand yourself. And before a guy should talk of marriage, 30. Because 30 is the age of maturity. There are still some things if you marry, when you are not mature, there are some things you think you'll be thinking you are missing. But at 30, they're not thinking of again. So my idea, personally, I don't advise anybody to do, make the mistake I made. I cut it for six years. And the truth is, the reason I was that long was because I didn't have sense. That's the truth. I didn't have enough sense. I didn't want to settle down. My plan was not to, I didn't want to be on the location. I want to just have my wife and my family somewhere. That I'll go hustle, 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 hustle. Make money, come back, give them money, go do business. Around. I didn't want to be a pastor. That's the truth. People don't know. I did not want to be a pastor. As in pastor at church. No. I want to have a lot of money. I'll build churches. I'll buy cars for pastors. I'll support women in church. Support men. Help orphans. But to now sit down. Because there's one part I, don't, I, I didn't like. Offering time. It, to me it looked like begging. You now want one plate. Everybody will come that. Master, hello. Master. To drop five naira, it, 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 it makes me. When God told me I was going to preach, I said, Ah, Lord, you know, I hate to beg. But today, most people are forcing God to call them. Even though God, those God called before, we are running. But now people are forcing God to call them because I didn't want to do that. So we have to be extremely sensitive and careful. Two years maximum is okay. Maximum. One year, six months, fine. One year, six months, okay. One year, okay. Even course in school, how long is it? Rise up, let's close. <laughs> you are good, you are kind, you are more than this. Lost for words, trying to describe you. Elohim, Elion, and the shame we. Your greatness is all I see. The
There's nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your words. You are not about to stop doing it. Lord, work by you. You are my Lord, by you. You are my Zion. Should be wonderful, John. Should be there for Should be wonderful, John. She be ye left for Jaru. By your blood that you shed, we have overcome. This charge and acquitted for life. And you gave us a right to your holy name. The center of power and strength. There is nothing you cannot change. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You are not about to stop doing it now. Oh Lord, oh I'm by you. You are my Zion. Oh Lord, oh I'm by you. You are my Zion. Oh Lord, oh I'm by you. You are my Zion. Oh Lord, oh I'm by you. You are my Zion. Begin to worship the Lord. I will not miss it in marriage. Begin to tell the Lord, I will not miss it. I will not. I receive grace to strengthen my relationship with God. I receive grace to strengthen and strengthen to straighten out my relationship with God. Go ahead and just talk to the Lord now. Socially, you are empowered today in your mind in your spirit Amen. you will not attract wrong people Amen. the sounding of spirit to be sharp to be alert to escape manipulations Amen. and let this be a season where you will correct foundational family errors Amen. God will help you Amen. My God, we help you. Amen. The Lord, we help you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We we'll just take our seat, faith. We we'll just cast that on the bowl and just generally rejoice. If you want to do a transfer, you can do that quietly. We we'll just take a song as we cast the seed. Amen. Glory to God. Are you blessed at all? If you have written down notes, you can just go back later, go through them, study them, and build yourself. Your offerings and seed is blessed. In Jesus' name. We call you a boobedi ke Jehovah Jari. Boobedi ke. Ah, We call you a boobedi ke Jehovah Jari. A boobedi ke. Ah, We call you a boobedi ke Jehovah Jari. A boobedi ke. We call you a boobedi ke Jehovah Jari. A boobedi ke. Everybody call him. We call you. 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 Hallelujah. All right, quickly as you step out, just please listen to this. Please, um, you can keep casting your offerings. On Monday, we're going to be having a worship mainly. We're going to be having a moment of worship.